This video is supported by Skillshare. Many are asking me why Starlink might be made a separate company. Here is what I think. The reason is quite intuitive, but the consequences of the decision should be thought over thoroughly. SpaceX is considering making Starlink a separate company because Starlink is a consumer business like Tesla. SpaceX launch services and its Starship depends heavily on government contracts. $2.6 billion for commercial crew program is one example, and the ISS cargo resupply missions is another example. Commercial incentives and consumer demand is Starlink's primary drive, and government contracts are SpaceX's biggest clients. The split makes sense to me. Here's a spin-off roadmap from Ernst & Young. We'll talk about this a little bit later in the video. For now, let's start with the potential of Starlink. According to the report by Morgan Stanley, it predicts SpaceX to have a possible valuation of $120 billion because of Starlink. In the document, six use cases and their potential revenues were discussed. Broadband, autonomous cars, commercial aviation connectivity, business aviation connectivity, connected aircraft, and maritime activities. Estimation of the total industry revenue were made for these six areas respectively, and a percentage share was assigned to SpaceX satellite business. In summary, the best case scenario for SpaceX adding up all six revenue streams gives SpaceX a net present value of $120 billion, a very impressive number, unimaginable for any launch providers. Yet imaginable for broadband service providers. It is also noted that the document was published before SpaceX announced its plan to launch 30,000 additional satellites to the sky to a total of 42,000 satellites. So recalculations are due and an even brighter future might be in store for Starlink. Communications and connectivity has always been at the center of human progress. 10,000 BCE, the agricultural revolution brought humans into communities. We domesticated animals and our population exploded. 221 BCE, Qing Dynasty of China became the world's first modern state, unifying 30 million people, roughly 15% of the world's population. 400 years ago, discovery of North America finally brought all of the world together, and only 200 years ago, electricity was invented and brought us even closer. Computer evolution is distinctive. On top of the unprecedented connectivity, it democratized media which enabled people like me to speak to you directly. Communications infrastructure is at the very foundation of this, and Starlink is trying to start a revolution from the very bottom. Here's what's great about Starlink becoming a spin-off in one sentence. It helps SpaceX streamline its incentives. For launch services that are mostly B2B or B2G, keep it that way and continue to develop industry relationships. But for Starlink that sells to consumers, it could be more aggressive in expansion. Then what about Starlink going public? How would this change things? Well, when Iridium went bankrupt in 2000s, it has spent $5 billion on making and sending 88 satellites to orbit, but the subscription count was only 55,000, not even enough to cover one single launch. Yet when Iradium managed its comeback with SpaceX launches, with 75 total satellites in orbit, Iradium is now worth $3.7 billion. For Starlink, with just four launches so far, SpaceX is already the biggest satellite owner in the world with 240 Starlink satellites orbiting in four different planes 550 kilometers away from Earth. With its launch capability, SpaceX is a clear winner in the market with no apparent competitors unless the Chinese catch up quickly in the coming years. But before that happens, Starlink has no competition in the satellite market, out to dominate it first, and then the communications market second. Aside from making Elon Musk richer, the primary goal of going public is to raise funding. The most tangible change to us is that we'll be able to put our money into Starlink and help SpaceX with its growth. But from a business standpoint, this means Starlink will have more funding from investors to go ahead with its plan to provide internet services to Americans. This means money for hundreds of Falcon launches and money for tens of thousands of Starlink satellites. This map shows us the complexity of corporate spin-offs. I won't bore you with details. What matters to us are the sections on transaction governance and operational separation. The whole process will take at least 10 months and it very well could drag into a second year. Transaction governance determines the leadership of Starlink and 
Operational separation determines the business Starlink covers. Two critical processes I'd like to bring to your attention is the step on determining the level of separation on day one. This step defines the degree of separation and the step on defining the operation model of different companies. This step is the most critical, which decides employee allocation and model of operation after the spin-off. Depending on the level of separation, we will have a stronger SpaceX. In my opinion, it would make sense for SpaceX to retain its satellite production department after the separation, which means SpaceX will be paid each time for its launch services all of the money will be spent back into building Starship. However, the decision could also be that SpaceX will retain also the satellite production capability so as to keep all productions and manufacturing in house. Right now, Starlink satellite production and R&D is in Redmond, Washington, and rocket production is in, is in California, so both structures are possible. We will have to wait for the decisions in the coming years. So what do you think? Do you think this will be a bad thing where Elon will lose absolute control over SpaceX resources and therefore postponing the timeline to Mars, or will this be positive for Starship since SpaceX will make a lot of cash launching thousands of Starlink satellites to space? Let me know in the comment down below. Whatever it is, if you want to understand more about leadership in an increasingly curious world, entrepreneurship, and many more creative skills, you can check out our sponsor of today, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of classes for creatives and curious people on topics including business analytics, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. For example, if you want to start your own company like Elon did a long time ago, why not check out this fantastic Skillshare original course on entrepreneurship? It takes you from brainstorming startup ideas to validation, from creating your first MVP to building the team, all of that taught by a seasoned investor, Albert Wenger from Union Square Ventures. I like this course a lot. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for you. Two months of Skillshare for free. To sign up, visit the link down below to get a two month unlimited access to over 25,000 classes. Furthermore, you'd be supporting this channel by doing so. Thank you for that.